So uh, a, a willingness to accept chaos is part of this, mm -hmm. and emotional support from family to, to take a risk. Mm -hmm. I think what, what some of the things that we can get to in this discussion probably in this room, and we'll get open up for questions in a little bit, is this notion of an ecosystem. And uh, Dr. K mentioned building a platform, and certainly some of that's going to take money, and some of it's going to mm -hmm. take people who have products that are, are in demand. What do you take from what you've learned so far in Tampa Bay about where we are in that continuum compared to maybe other communities? You travel a lot. What are some communities that are farther along? What are, what are some communities that aren't? Yeah. Where do we stand and where do we, where do we need to go? Yeah, so I don't know enough about Tampa Bay to give you a definitive answer, but there's no place like Silicon Valley. You know, Silicon Valley has a very large concentration of entrepreneurs, you know, angel investors, you know, mentors, you know, venture capitalists, you know, you know, you know, the accountants, you know, the, you know, the you know, attorneys you know, who specialize in, in these businesses. Very heavy concentration of, of that and huge experience base. You know, people have built companies. You know, you know, almost everybody knows somebody who, uh, who has built a company. You know, and uh, so you know, Silicon Valley is in a class by itself. You know, then the places like Boston and Austin have emerged. You know, uh, but when I started my company, it wasn't so. There, wasn't, there was no tie. There was no ecosystem that, you know, that we could tap into, at least Indians would tap into. And uh, you know, there was no mentors. You know, there were no role models. You know, there was you know, no angel investors you could talk to. You know, so when I jumped in, you know, I jumped in feet first you know, without thinking. And, uh, but uh, yeah, 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 we, yeah, we came out uh, yeah, winners in three, four, five years. And uh, yeah. so I think yeah, ecosystem enables a large number of people to start. But the yeah, two entrepreneurial person yeah, doesn't, need, doesn't need much help. It shouldn't need much help. What entrepreneur needs is being able to dream. You know, this point I made earlier, why not me? You can only dream that if you see people like you or people you think are not as good as you being able to do it, then you have to hold yourself accountable. Why not me? Yeah, and, uh, so having some role models, you know, some, you know, some people you know, you know, as benchmarks that you can you know, hold. You know, and uh, yeah, then certain amount of, of inspiration you know, you know, that you have to draw from something, somebody. And uh, it's not, you know, certain amount of help. You know, I'll use a simple amount of help. How do I do this thing? How do I you know, interpret it? How do I, how do I you know, you know, hire people? How do I write a business plan? How do I validate my idea? These are simple things. You know, so ecosystem starts to provide you these things. So it enables a large number of people to, to try. But the winners emerging at the end are no more than before. Only 2% of the population at, at large you know, succeeds as, as a entrepreneurs. You know, you know, and that 2% is considered a very good number. And uh, you know, so odds are very much against you. you know, as a, for average person, you know, if you are given 2% odds of winning, I don't think you will take that bet. Well, and you probably have seen patterns in terms of what works and what doesn't. What are some of the issues that you're seeing are continual failures for entrepreneurs that they just that the lessons aren't learned? Well, the, the, the first one is, uh, of course, uh, uh, I'll wait till next year. Uh, let me save some money. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, so you know, this uh, continuous uh, reluctance to take that first step. The, uh, here's the basic uh, the math. If you take that first step and leave your job, and sustain yourself and keep the, the passion growing, you know, keep the fire growing for six months to a year, your odds improve tenfold. Because 90% of the people don't even take that first step. And now you're part of the select 10% who took that first step. And now 1% to 2% of the broad you know, population is 10 to 20 percent of, of the select group. Those are not bad odds. Because if you succeed, you're set for life. If you don't succeed, you can try a couple of times. But you, even if you don't succeed, you, know, you have lost maybe a year or two worth of salary. You know, it's a very limited downside, very unlimited upside. So the first step becomes you know, you know, the most crucial thing. You're giving up everything you know, to pursue your dream, it puts you uh, on a path you know, of success, you know, not, like nothing else. Talk about money. 
Uh, what is the current state of, I mean, you, you with Inventus, you obviously you've, you mentioned you're starting a new fund. What are, what's on the horizon that the folks in this room might want to anticipate is an area of opportunity that maybe we're not thinking about? Your money for the entrepreneurs, you mean? Yeah. Know, the investment money? Yep. Only 11% of the entrepreneurs ever raise money. 89% of the entrepreneurs who succeed do with their own you know, resources, with their own. So Dr. Patel, he, he never raised a dollar from anybody. He told me today, you know, he never raised a dollar from anybody. I can you know, give you a long list of people in the Valley who have done extremely well without raising any money. So money helps, but it's not the crucial factor. It's not a crucial factor. Yeah, I just want to uh, re-emphasize that one. Money helps a lot, makes your life, you know, life a little bit easier, but it's not the end all. Yeah, a lot more money is available in Silicon Valley you know, because you know, a lot of people have made you know, money in start options. You know, you know, you know. So if you want to raise half a million dollars in Silicon Valley, uh, I don't think you'll have any trouble doing that one over there. I don't know you know the things in Tampa yet, but there's a million dollar uh, fund being announced you know, today. So money is available, in my opinion, you know, if you're able to you know, show the commitment. If you're not able to leave your job, if you're not able to you know, you know, bet on yourself, why should anybody else? You know, why should anybody else? You know, if your family and friend is not willing to give you a couple hundred thousand dollars, you know, they know you best. <coughs> why should anybody else? So, so you have to look inside. You know, you, you can't tell people that, hey, I'm waiting for the funding of uh, today's money before I leave my job. You know, that's a very wrong message to be sending to me as, a, as an investor. You know, that uh, you know, you're not a risk taker. You're not willing to bet on yourself. You know, and, uh, so I, I think money is available, you know, but you need to have a right frame of mind. You, you need to show the, uh, the world, you know, people that you're deserving. A lot more people are looking for money you know, that, then you know, our fund last year looked at 1,200 business plans. 1,200. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you know, people are coming at us two, three people a day, and we made six investments. How many? Six. Six out of 1,200. Yeah. So many years and, now. And, and that's typical for a venture capital fund. That's a typical for a venture capital fund. And is there a common thread among those six that, that were? Were the essential element, or was there a different element? Uh, so I'll, I'll give you some elements uh, in a minute. But the point I want to make is the investors can be very choosy. You know, the entrepreneurs have almost no hand to play. Almost no hand to play. You know, you know, because investors are not opportunity limited. They are not opportunity limited. So entrepreneurs who get very focused on valuations, you know, I was telling you know, uh, 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 <laughs> entrepreneurs I just met this afternoon. Yeah, I'll give you, give, give you some math. An entrepreneur walks in, you know, to me and wants money from me, and you know, he says, you know, eh, I need a million dollars. I, yeah, and okay, yeah, so yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm ready to invest. <coughs> yeah, yeah, so, so, so what, what is it you're worth? So I'll give you 5% of the company for a million dollars. Okay. <laughs> you think you're worth $19 million before I give you a million dollars? The next day I walks into me with a similar plan, you know, with, I'm impressed again. And he says, I want a million dollars. And I'll give you 10%. I say, okay, you, know, you get 90%, I get 10%. I'm doing twice as well as the other day. The third day I watch into me and says, hey, I need a, a million dollars and I'll give you 20%. So here's the math. The first day's valuation was $19 million. He owns 95%. Second day's valuation was $9 million to money and he owns, owns 90%. Third day's valuation yeah, was five million. He was 80 percent, and his money valuation is only four million. Where do you think I'll put the money? And the difference between 80 percent and 95 percent is marginal, 20 percent only. If you're not going to be rich at 20, 80 percent of the ownership of the company, you're not going to be rich at 95 percent. So people who had hung up on valuations as a as a test of their manhood very quickly discover yeah, they don't get the money. They don't get the money. You know, uh, you know, the four million uh, valuation doesn't matter what was your valuation is. Your percentage ownership that matters. Yeah. You own eighty percent. You got a million dollars. You know, you got a chance to execute. The only valuation that matters to you is the one at the end. You know, you know, if you get, uh, you know, 
95% and don't get the money, you know, what good is that? <laughs> yeah. So, so I end up having uh, 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 this, uh, I tell this to entrepreneurs all the time, you know, you should be happy to have an opportunity to get the money to execute on your idea. If you really hunt, get hung up on the, on the, on the variations, you know, you're going to lose. You're going to lose. And, uh, yeah, so let's draw, you know, it, it's not what your valuation was at the end, it's how fast you create value. That really matters. And, and, and you need money for that. You know, you know, time becomes of the essence. Time becomes of the essence because almost every company I have known, there's a, there's a horse race. There's another horse out there going after the same opportunity. You know, and, and, and the one who gets there first, you know, you know, gets the testament first with the, his, his idea and, and, and almost always wins, right? And so, yeah, so you need to, yeah, yeah, become a little bit humble, yeah, you know, raise the money. So I'll tell you my story. Yeah, so, yeah, Indians were not entrepreneurs. You know, had, by 1981, when I started our company, yeah, it was, uh, Indians have become very much typecast as smart techies, smart engineers, smart programmers. You know, somehow the Indians had, had uh, developed this uh, uh, mathematical gene, you know, and, and they were good in num uh, with numbers, you know, and, uh, you know, they can add, they can, they can multiply on the fly, you know. The Americans used to be, you know, very amazed, you know, how fast we can, you know, do numbers. You know, but, you know, image was, you know, single dimensional, you know, techies. So when I went looking for money, you know, it became very hard you know, to convince people that Indians should be general purpose entrepreneurs. You know, you know, they can sell, they can market, you know, they can manage people, they can manage money. You know, there was no example of that one, right? There were no examples of Indians doing any of that stuff. You know, the venture directors would look at say, three small tech, you know, techies, damn good business plan. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, but you guys don't have any business sense. You guys don't have, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you guys don't have any business uh, die in your team. So it was a very clear message, you know, that you guys don't have any white you know, in your team who can do all these things that, you know, why would anybody work for Indians? You know, you know VP of marketing, you know, who by and large is white, VP of sales, who is by and large is uh, white, VP of finance, who is by and large is uh, white. Why would you work for Indian? There was no history of that one. So, so we had to put up with that one in back in 1981. Yeah, I don't think that's an issue anymore. You know, the Indians have emerged as, as a very good you know, managers, very good entrepreneurs. But this one venture capitalist looked at me and said, you know, Indians have not proven themselves as, as uh, entrepreneurs. Uh, yeah, yeah, yes sir, they haven't. Yeah. But they're damn smart people. Yes, 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 yes sir, they are. He said, maybe it's time to try one. <laughs> that's the logic he used to give us the funding. Maybe it's time to try one. You know, John Bosch, uh, was his name, John, you know, John Bosch, uh, you know, said, I don't want any sass from you guys. I'll make you one offer, and I want an answer in 15 minutes. And I'll give you $2 million for half the company. We didn't need 15 minutes to give you an answer. <laughs> we'll take it. You know, you know, less than 15 seconds, because that was a very fair offer. You know, never even thought you know, a, you know, a, that, uh, you know, a, I, I should negotiate. I was happy to have an opportunity to be able to execute on my idea. I was happy. John Bosch was a hero because he discovered Indians in the valley. He made a hundred times his money on the bet he made, uh, uh, placed on us. He had a bragging right for forever until the day he died. He died a couple of years ago. You know, that he discovered Indians in the Silicon Valley. You know, and uh, you know, so you, you know, you know, bragging rights are one of the things you earn as a part of you know, you know, what you do, right? And, but, 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 you know, he did bet on somebody, you know, he said he was trying to do one, and he did one, and, and, and his bet paid off. So I, I'll tell you, the valuation, you know, you know or something, if you get hung up on you're going to lose, you know, you should be happy to have the opportunity to pursue your dream.